Okay. So the first thing I want to do is uh, probably find my reactions. Let's think about this first. Um, this particular problem wants to know these four bar forces. Right? We've already discussed that part. And we already talked about two, that if you look carefully, you'll see that the force in CG is zero, and that's from a zero force member. And what case was that? Remember the two cases we talked about? That would be a case two. So we have one of the one of the three, I'm sorry, one of the four unknowns already. So with that said, and we're really now looking at a cut through this section, uh, you want to work the left side or the right side? Ms. Wiseman votes left. Anybody else going to go left? I know we're a very conservative country, but we'll probably go left today. So when I do that, I just need to find my reactions on that side. So let's look what that is. So I'll have... I'll assume that I have AY, EY at the pin, and EX. Now, how can I find AY quickly? Yeah, let's sum the moments about E. Okay, I'm using right-hand rule. Now, if you look carefully, all these forces, one kip, one kip, one kip, half kip, right? Uh, they're all creating positive moment about E. What I'm going to do first is since these one kip are all constant, I'm going to factor the one kip out and then multiply them by their respective distances. You know, I forgot to write down the distances. Do you remember the spans of these things? Twelve. Everything was twelve? Yeah. What was the height? Okay. So the first one will have a moment arm of 12. The second would have a moment arm of 24. And the third would have a moment arm of 36. So that accounts for these three forces. And then I have the one half kip. And what's its moment arm? 48. And then I have AY, which creates negative moment, also with the moment arm of 48. Everybody see that? So what should AY be equal to? Looks like 2, maybe? I did my Rain Man thing. I think it's 2. Two kips. Did I do it right? It should be 96 divided by 40. Yes? Okay, I got a confirmation. I, I, I think two, two feels good to me. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to draw my free body diagram for the left-hand side. So let's do that. So there's my free body diagram. So I'll start. So up here at the top, I'll assume tension in BC. Down here at the bottom, I'll assume tension in GH. There's my diagonal force. Tension in BG. Then I have an applied one kip force, an applied half kip force, and I have my new reaction, which is two kips. And I think this is 12, and this is 16. Everybody see that? I'll just put little things there to show you where I've cut it. How's that? Did I leave anything off? Now, thinking about what we talked about earlier with method of sections, um, what would be a good equation to try? Let's try to find one equation in one unknown and that it doesn't incorporate any previous calculations. So I, I think we can do that from our strategy we talked about previously. Let's, let's try moments first. What would be a good place to sum moments? Oh, I, I left off the, the uh, values here. 
I heard somebody say B. B. So let's do that. The sum moment's about B. So I'll sum moments about B, set them equal to zero. So who creates moment about B? Well, BC and BG do not. GF creates positive moment. All right, everybody see that? And what's the moment R? Well, we're doing GH, right? And from B, the perpendicular distance would be the height, which is 16. What about this one kip force? Does it create moment about B? No, it's line of action passes through B, right? And then I have these two forces over here, the applied force, one half, and the two kip force acting up. Really, what's the resultant of those two forces? One and a half acting up. So let's just treat it as that. So a one and a half kip force acting up would create positive or negative moment about B? Negative. So I have a 1.5 kip force, and a moment arm will be the horizontal distance, which is 12. So we should be able to find the force in GH. It looks like it's going to be positive, and I don't know what that number is going to be off the top of my head. Um, 1.125, and that would be kips. And it came out positives. So, Mr. Province, is that compression or tension? Excellent. Let the court record that Mr. Province said tension. One down, two to go. Where do we go now? Let's try another moment equation. Where's another point we can do moments? G. G. Yeah, so use this advantage. You know, we know B, G. G, H, the subscripts both have G. We can go through G. So now let's sum moments about G. Set those equal to zero. So since we pick G here, then B, G, and G, H pass through G. So I'm left with B, C, one kip, and this resultant. So let's start with B, C. Does B, C create positive or negative moment about G? Negative. So there's BC, and what's its moment arm? 16. Should be the height, which is 16, right? What about the one kit, positive or negative? Positive. And what's its moment arm? What's the distance between G and H? 12. And then I've got my composite force here, which will be one and a half up. About G, it creates negative. And what's its moment arm? The distance between G and A is 24. So what is force BC? It looks like it's going to be negative. What's the number? 36, 24. What's 24 divided by 16? 1.5. 1.5? So I think it's 1.5. Anybody else get that? Yes. All right. And last, but certainly not least, how are we going to find BG? Well, we could sum forces in the x direction. If you did it well, you would be fine. However, there's an easier way. Some forces in the y direction. So let's assume up is positive. Now the advantage to this is not only do you consider fewer forces, but you also don't include the results of the previous two, which possibly could be incorrect. So let's uh, figure out what this slope is. So it's really 12 to 16 which is really three to four. So it's a three, four, five triangle. So my vertical piece would be the three to four, so it'd be four fifths, and it's acting down, so that'd be negative four fifths, the force in BG, that's acting down. What else is acting down? 
We've got a, the one kip force here at H, and we have this composite force we've been working on the whole time, which is one and a half up. So we should be able to find the force in BG, and it is, it looks like it's positive, and it looks like it's like 0.625. Anybody check me on that? There we go. Now that is a very doable problem for the exam. You should be very happy if this shows up on the exam. The odds are that you won't be that happy. <laughs> but it's a good thing to prepare for. Yes, Ms. Holland? Why that's negative for this? I'm just confused on the triangle where it's negative and positive. Uh, you mean in the equations? Yeah, for the summation of y, and you have negative for this. Okay, so we're looking at this force right here, BG, and let me draw it on there to help you out. So you, you've really got a horizontal component, and I'll have to slide it over, but a vertical component, right? So the vertical component, which I computed as four fists, it's acting down. Okay. And I assumed positive was up. So I said this force was negative, this force was negative. Technically, this would be positive and this would be negative, but I went ahead and resolved these into just a force that's 1.5 acting up. Yeah, this, this stuff is not hard like that, but it's, you really have to take your time and be careful and keep your signs consistent. Um, when you make a mistake, it just tumbles through everything. One great thing about method of section, again, and it's its advantage, you can see if I made an error here, it's not going to affect these other two equations. If I make an error here, it's not going to affect either. So they're, they're independent and they don't involve other results. Now, the only thing that they all involve is the reaction which goes way back up to the beginning. So don't forget the simplest things. If you make an error in the reaction, you know the problem is dead in the water right off the bat. But remember, I'm going to focus on the process and give you significant credit for that. Um, the answers are important. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you don't want to design a structure with forces that are incorrect. That would not be good. Um, it's very important, but... Our objective here is the process and the strategy as well. Okay, so I'm going to stop this.